Hi, my name is Harun Janeri and I would like to welcome you to this exciting demonstration video in which we will be discussing a device that has always fascinated me. It is the Vortex Tube or also known in the industry as the cold gun. Now a Vortex Tube is a solid state device. It has no moving parts. It uses no refrigerants and yet it is able to furnish a hot stream of air and a cold stream of air simultaneously all it needs is compressed air. The hot stream of air can be as hot as 200 degrees centigrade while the cold stream of air can be as cold as minus 50 degrees centigrade. So watch this video till the end to find out how a vortex tube works. We will also cover some experiments in this video and finally towards the end of the video we will be sharing with you an idea of achieving cooling at a larger scale using no electricity at all. So without further ado, let's begin. Synergy Files is a channel for budding engineers and technicians. If you haven't done already, subscribe to our channel today to get our latest engineering videos. The Vortex Tube, also known as the Rank Hills Vortex Tube, is a fascinating device that has no moving parts and yet it is able to produce streams of hot and cold air if pressurized air is supplied to it. The more pressurized air you push through it, the greater the temperature differential. At the cold end, you can achieve air stream temperatures of minus 50 degrees centigrade and at the other end, you can get as high temperature as 200 degrees centigrade. The most common use of vortex tube is spot cooling where compressed air is available. Let's now look at how it works. I've come up with a simple explanation for how a vortex tube works. The compressed air is allowed to enter the tube circumferentially at an angle. This gives a swell component to the air which is allowed to spin inside the tube. The expansion of the air inside the tube also allows the air to spin faster. Once it spins, the higher energy or the higher temperature particles get pushed to the circumference of the tube just like a centrifuge. The low energy or the low temperature particles occupy the center. The hot stream is bled out at one end while the cold stream is reflected back because of the presence of conical nozzle at the hot end. It comes out at the other end and that's how you get two streams of air with a very high temperature differential. Now let's look at the price. There used to be a time when vortex tube used to cost upward of 200 pounds but now you can get the smaller ones for as low as 30 pounds. The price is determined by the volume of air the vortex tube can process. The tubes that can process large volumes have a bigger diameter and a longer length. This is the one that I've purchased. It's a 130 millimeter length vortex tube and it cost me about 32 pounds. It is used in machining centers to cool the cutting tool and remove the chips. There are longer ones that can handle 150 cubic feet per minute or about 250 meter cube per hour. They have diameters of 13 millimeter and length of over 500 millimeter. The cost of these large tubes is upward of 300 pounds. You can see there are three openings. One opening has to be supplied with compressed air. One is the hot air outlet and one is the cold air outlet that is attached to the flexible tube to position the cold stream. Okay, now let's get down to some experimentation. Now you might notice on the screen two components. First is the standard tire inflator. I got this one really cheap. This one cost me about 10 pounds, but you can get uh, others cheaper than this. And it's connected to a vortex tube and you can see that's the cold stream end and that's the warm stream end. Now you might notice that the connection between two isn't really perfect. Uh, you should use a coupling to connect the two because the diameters were different but what I used instead was uh, PTFE tape. Whenever I want to improvise this is my go-to material. Okay now what we'll do is we'll run the compressor. It will send the compressed air down the vortex tube opening and that will create a flow switch sending cold stream one end, warm stream the other. To capture the temperature difference, I've got a wet kitchen towel, the temperature of which is about 20.1 degrees. I put the inflator on the cloth so to reduce the noise. 
Okay, after one minute, we do notice a slight drop in temperature. It's not that much because the inflator is not really sending uh, highly compressed air to the vortex tube. The more the pressure of the incoming air, the more the temperature differential. So we do notice a slight drop, but it's not really that much. This is however really interesting. If we look at the temperature difference across the tube, then we see at the cold end it's about 21 degrees. But if we look at the warm end, then we see it's about 25 degrees. So a notable temperature differential for a very low pressurized air. So the best is to feed it through a cylinder. So now let's begin our final segment of the video which is to discuss how a large-scale vortex tube can be used for air conditioning without using any electricity. This would regard three components. First is a air storage cylinder. The second is obviously a large-scale vortex tube. And the third is a wind compressor. As you have already noticed, it is best to feed the vortex tube from a compressed air storage cylinder. This ensures a smooth stream of air. You don't have to worry about the cost because you can get a cheaper storage cylinder. For example, a secondhand fire extinguisher can be used. Fire extinguisher can hold five to six times the pressure of the atmospheric air. Some breathing apparatus cylinders can also hold more than 100 times the atmospheric pressure, but they are slightly more expensive. You can look online for scuba tanks or for secondhand fireman breathing apparatus too. The other device that you are going to be needing is a wind compressor. What it does is it takes the wind energy and uses it to produce compressed air. So essentially it is a wind turbine that instead of running a generator is running a compressor. Now there is at least one company that makes it commercially. You can produce one for yourself and it would be much cheaper. You can salvage components for a compressor and wind turbine blades are also easy and cheap to make. Several plans are available on the internet, but if you want to buy it, then there is that option too. So the idea is to create compressed air, store it in the cylinder and feed it to the vortex tube when heating or cooling is required. This system of air conditioning does not require any electricity at all. Now there are applications where the use of electricity can be hazardous, such as in a cotton or a fuel storage warehouse. In such places, this mode of cooling and heating is the safest option. It's emission free and there is absolutely no refrigerant used that will need to be topped up. I hope this video will inspire you and hopefully give you more ideas on using the vortex tube. You can create a cool stream of air in the harshest of environments as long as there is wind. And with this, the video is concluded. Thank you for your attention.